seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus. and welcome. Special welcome to the folks who are watching at home. It's good for us to be together for worship wherever we happen to be. The Evangelism Committee is in the process of updating our church directory. So uh, just this week they sent out letters to collect updated information. So be watching for that in the mail and also you can uh, there's a form on the website that you can fill out and update the information if you want to save yourself a stamp sending it back. Uh, the Christian Community Life Committee got flowers in honor of Mother's Day this weekend, so they would like all of the ladies to pick up a flower before they leave today. And if you forgot to get anything for your mother, you can also pick up a flower and give it to her tomorrow. Uh, committee night is this Thursday at 7 o'clock. We meet in the church basement for a short devotion and then break to do committee work. Even if you're not on a committee, we'd like to have you join us. We'll find a place to plug you in and put you to work. drive through communion will be next Sunday for those who would like to receive the sacrament but aren't quite ready to return to in-person worship. I'll be outside in the parking lot starting about 10.30ish when worship is over. Uh, we're continuing to see more people return for in-person worship, which is exciting, but that may mean that our process for Holy Communion might not be familiar to everyone. So at distribution, I'll invite you to come forward and pick up communion off the table. Uh, Andy will have that video, and my apologies to those who have seen it like a hundred times now, but it is new for some people. Uh, please remember to give your fellow worshipers that six feet of space when you come up to receive communion. And to help that along, we'll have the, the uh, organ side come up first, followed by the pulpit side when they're finished. And then you may consume the sacrament when you return to your pew, or wait until you get outside if that's a more comfortable place to remove your mask. Our faith practice reading this week was from Psalm 4. So in verse 4, the psalmist writes, When you are disturbed or angry, do not sin. What does the psalmist say we are to do instead? 
Anyone catch that? Audrey, go ahead. Yes, when you go to your bed, think about it and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. So be sure to collect your candy bar up here and then your flower on your way out. So chocolate and flowers, you're all set for Mother's Day now. Our readings each week are sequential, so this coming week we'll be reading uh, Psalm 5. Let us begin our time of worship with song. in the highest glory to the almighty glory to the lamb of god and glory to the living word glory to the lamb glory glory in the highest glory to the almighty Glory to the Lamb of God, and glory to the living Word, glory to the Lamb. I give glory, 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 glory to the for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from the 10th chapter of Acts. Caleb Hayes is our virtual lector. Acts 10, 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell 
upon all who heard the word. Circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for the baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just ha as they have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. They were invited, they invited him to stay for several days. Our second reading comes from the book of First John. Christine Danhoff is our virtual lector. The second reading comes from the fifth chapter of John, verses one through six. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Here ends the reading. Our gospel video clip comes from the 15th chapter of John. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the characteristic that best identifies a Christian. From the earliest days of the church, it was love. Love was the defining mark of Christian believers. Pagans would marvel at the sharing among the Christians. They would comment, see how they loved one another. They were described to Roman, em Roman Emperor Hadian this way. They love one another. They never fail to help widows and to save orphans from those who would hurt them. If they have something, they freely give to those who have nothing. They do not consider themselves brothers and sisters in the usual sense, but instead brothers and sisters through the Spirit of God. Wayne Meek has written extensively on the growth of Christianity and he notes how Christians triumphed in the classical world. When epidemics raged, the Christians would care for each other. The pagans would not. The Christians would nurse people outside their community. 
the pagans would flee. Christians respected women. Girls were allowed to mature before they were married, while culture around them married off young girls, abused women, and subjugated their wives. Along with the Jews, rules of hygiene and moderation provided a healthier community and an example of love and care. Others would see how Christians cared for each other and cared for them, and many converted. People became Christians because their moral way of life was better than that of the pagans, and their love for those within and outside the community showed a better way, the way of love. Those relationships based on love are the subject of our gospel reading. Last week, we heard Jesus' words, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. He goes on to tell his disciples that they are the branches. So it's a, a triple relationship. God the Father is the vine grower, Jesus is the vine, and us as the branches. Jesus tells us to remain, to abide in him so that we can bear much fruit. And warns that if we fail to maintain that connection to him, we'll be unable to do anything. We'll be like the branch that the Father prunes, will wither and die. But Jesus also promises, if you remain, if you abide in me, and my words remain, if they abide in you, if you stay connected, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Jesus continues with what we heard today. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. The illustration of vine and branches was a way to talk about the importance of relationships, the importance of our connectedness. Remain in my love is Jesus' way of saying, stay connected, keep the relationship going. Jesus tells us that he's connected to the Father, so when we're connected to Jesus, we also are connected to the Father. Because God is love, we keep that relationship going by love. Then Jesus gives us his great commandment that we love one another. Love one another as he has loved us. It's a big circle, a giant web of relationship, connection, and love. Loving one another, of course, is easy when things are going well. When people are doing what we want, they're easy to love. But loving one another is hard when things are not going well. When people are doing things that hurt us or things that make us miserable. But Jesus tells us to love one another as he has loved us. He's not talking about just the people we like or just the people who do things our way. He's calling us to love one another as in everybody, all the time, sinners and saints through good and bad. He's calling us to love that other person even when the other person has hurt us, to love even the one who has caused us offense or injury. Now, you might say, I can't do that. I can't love someone who's hurt me. And you would be right. Nature calls us to hurt those who hurt us, to injure those who have injured us. It's a self-preservation thing to maintain individual well-being over relationship. But Jesus tells us to love one another as he has loved us. And he loves us even when we hurt him. He has loved us even when we injured him. He has loved us even when we abandoned him. Jesus has loved us through good and bad. But you're right. We can't love people who hurt us, 
except by the grace of God. Therefore, we pray for God's grace. We pray for God's strength so that we can do what's not natural. We abide in God's love. We keep our relationship with God going that we might love one another. Even the people who hurt us, when we're connected to God through Jesus, the impossible becomes possible. Let me clarify, though. When Jesus calls us to love one another, he's not calling us to become a doormat, to become an enabler of unacceptable behavior. If a husband is abusing a wife, for example, Jesus doesn't expect her to continue to be abused. Enduring abuse for the sake of relationship, that's not love. She might need to leave, but she can continue to pray for the man who has hurt her. She might even need to call the police. Holding him accountable for his actions is compatible with acting in love. But the point remains. We can't love people who hurt us, except by our connection to the God who is love. Let me share an illustration of that love. Philip Yancey, in his book, What's So Amazing About Grace, writes, Not long ago, I received a postcard from a friend that only had six words on it. I am the one Jesus loves. I smiled when I saw the return address, for my strange friend excels at these pious slogans. When I called him, though, he told me the slogan came from the author and speaker Brennan Manning. At a seminar, Manning referred to Jesus' closest friend on earth, a disciple named John, identified in the Gospels as the one Jesus loved. Manning said, if John were to be asked, what's your primary identity in life, he would not say, I'm a disciple, I'm an apostle, an evangelist, an author of one of the four Gospels, but rather John would say, I am the one Jesus loves. Imagine if we too came to the place where we saw our primary identity in life as the one Jesus loves. How differently would we view ourselves and one another if we knew that love? Sociologists have a theory of the looking glass self. You become what the most important person in your life, be it a spouse or a parent, a boss or whatever, you become what the most important person in your life thinks you are. If your most important person is supportive and thinks you're great, that can encourage you to become a better person. If your most important person is not supportive or downright abusive, their opinion of you can be damaging to the self. So the application is, how would my looking glass self change if I truly believed the Bible's outstanding words about God's love for me, if I looked in the mirror and saw what God sees. Brennan Manning tells the story of an Irish priest who, while walking through his rural parish, sees an old peasant kneeling by the side of the road praying. Impressed, the priest says to the man, you must be very close to God. The peasant looks up from his prayers, thinks a moment, then says, yes, he's very fond of me. If nothing else, I want you to hear today, you are someone Jesus loves. Jesus is connected to the Father and calls us to remain connected to him so that we too can be connected to the Father. Abide, remain, stay connected so that you may know God is very fond of you. Because God is love, we keep the relationship going by love. 
Jesus says, remain in my love, abide in my love, love one another. And when we do that, two things will happen. Jesus will fill us with joy. And Jesus will help us love one another so they can experience that same joy. So when we stay connected to Jesus, everybody wins. Amen. our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Today we pray for the Moravian Church, giving thanks for the life and witness of Nicholas Ludwig von Zinzendorf, renewer of the church and hymn writer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love, so that by their song all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of nations' leaders, and give them your spirit, so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering. We pray especially for Audrey, Phyllis, Jeff, Ed, Anne, and Evelyn, for Kevin, Pat, Rocky, and all of those we name before you now. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us toward life-changing responses to these needs in our own communities. Be with the dying. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. This is the point in worship where we normally take up offering. For those who are here with us, we have the offering plate over next to the door. For those watching at home, thank you for continuing to send in your offerings, even in this time when you can't gather with us. Let us join in prayer. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now prepare to receive Holy Communion. I want to show you these cups real quick because they're difficult to get into. They're double sealed. So the, the wafer is sealed under the first layer. You can see it's got kind of a, a red, I don't know if you can see, it's got kind of a red print there. And so you peel off the first layer and that releases the wafer. And then you've got the little tab thing here at the bottom. And you peel that back and it releases the grape juice. So it's a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it should be okay. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts unto the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join in prayer as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this meal. Come, eat, and be fed. Amen.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Love him in the morning when you see the sun arising. Love him in the evening cause he took you through the day. And in the in-between times when you feel the pressure coming, remember that he loves you and he promises to stay. When you think you have to worry, cause it seems the thing to do. Remember he's not in a hurry. He's always got time for you. Love him in the morning when you see the sun arising. Love him in the evening cause he took you through the day. And in the in-between times when you feel the pressure coming. Remember that he loves you and he promises to stay. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God. God's peace, everyone. Have a blessed week.